Welcome once again to our discussion on uh, natural resource economics. So, in our last class, we have basically defined natural resource economics, different types of natural resource economics, and then we were mainly focusing on what should be the pricing mechanism for optimal extraction of non renewable resources, and uh, we said that the marginal cost pricing is not uh, feasible in the context of non-renewable resources because these resources are not easily replicable. Over and above marginal cost, we need to add something because of this opportunity cost, right? Opportunity cost, why it is arising? Because if we use the non-renewable resource today, then the same amount of resource will not be available for tomorrow's extraction. So, because of which the opportunity cost or marginal user cost we defined should be added with marginal cost of extraction and both these components marginal cost of extraction plus marginal user cost taken together they are called augmented marginal cost. So, price should be equals to augmented marginal cost, right. So, what we are discussing here optimal extraction optimal extraction of non-renewable resources. And our basic framework to decide about the optimal extraction, we said that we will assume a resource owner uh, who has some amount of non-renewable resource and the resource owner is trying to decide uh, whether to extract the resource today or keep it for tomorrow. So, depending on the discount rate and expected future price, the resource owner will decide how much resource to extract today, how much resource to extract tomorrow so and and so forth. So, basically uh, what we discussed is that today's benefit from extracting the resource is P minus this is uh, P P 0 minus M C E ok, P 0 minus M C E and tomorrow's benefit is basically P 1 minus M C E marginal cost of extraction and this is the discounted one and at optimality that means at equilibrium these two conditions these two benefits are same and resource owner is basically is indifferent between using the resource today or tomorrow. So, from this what we got is basically uh, P 0 equals to M C plus P 1 minus M C E divided by 1 plus R and this is this 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 condition this is called first rule this is called first rule of optimal extraction first rule of optimal extraction of of uh, exhaustible resources so from here what we can get is that uh, from here we can get that P 1 is basically equals to uh, M C E plus P 0 minus M C E 
into 1 plus r and from here what we can get that p t the general expression should be m c e plus p 0 minus m c e into 1 plus r to the power t. So, that is the general expression. Now, this, this, this equation is quite insightful. From here, what we can understand that as t tends to infinity, what will happen? As t tends to infinity, p2 or p t also tends to infinity. Okay? So, that means, if we assume a sufficiently large amount of t, that means, let us say, uh, after 50, 100 or let us say 150 or 200 years, the price of the existing resource will become infinite. So, that means, there would be an exponential growth for these exhaustible resources. But does it really happen? Do you think that after 200 years, price of coal or price of one barrel of oil will become infinite? Is it really possible? This equation shows like that. So, that means from this equation what you can understand after, after a sufficiently long amount of time say after 200 years, price of the existing non-renewable resources would become infinite. That is what we are getting from the fact that as t tends to infinity, p t tends to infinity that is what we are getting. Now, the question is, the question is, does it or do you think P t would actually, would actually become infinite? you have to think. The equation shows like that. Okay? From the equation, we can easily understand as t tends to infinite, then p t, that means price of the existing resource at a sufficiently long, after a sufficiently long amount of time, it would become p t will tend to infinite. The question is, do you think p t would actually become infinite? The answer is actually no. The answer is no. Okay. Then, what are the reasons? What are the reasons? So, P t would never, would never become infinite because of the following reasons. First of all, can you think of what are the two uh, main factors 
that may explain that Pt would never become infinite. See, the price, price is always determined by the demand. That is very simple demand theory. So, price is always, price is always, price is always determined by demand. So, even though this equation shows that at t tends to infinity p t will become infinity, infinite, we have not accommodated the demand condition in that equation after 200 years. So, after 200 years, after 200 years, 200 years, demand for oil demand for coal or oil would be would be such that pt will not become infinite so, we are not sure about the demand for coal or oil after 200 years. Unless we consider the demand, we cannot say that infinite. So, demand will always put a cap on the upper limit of the price. That is very simple. For any good, for any good, the demand condition will not allow price to become infinite. So, what we are thinking that after 200 years, when the coal or oil, the existing non-renewable resource will tend to be almost exhausted because of its lower availability, the price would become infinite. So, we are basically thinking only the supply side of the story. Since the resource will get exhausted after 200 or 250 or 500 years, the price would become infinite. But we cannot actually decide the price unless we accommodate the demand condition in the model. So, the demand condition will always put a cap on the upper limit of the price. So, that is why price will never become infinite. Second reason is after 200 years, after 200 years, there might be, there might be some alternative or substitute substitute goods or resources available in the market. Okay. After 200 years, we may get some alternative of coal, we may get some alternative of oil. So, that will heavily influence the utilization of the existing renewable resource. So, that means this alternative will also determine the upper limit of the price. And the alternative resource, technology or goods, what we are talking about, it has, it, 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 it has a it has a it has a different name a specific name is given in the resource economics uh, literature which is called backstop which is called backstop so what is backstop basically availability availability of alternative or you may call it substitute goods or resources
और टेक्नोलॉजी व्हिच मेक्स यूटिलाइजेशन of the existing resource more efficient that is the idea of backstop so that means after 200 years there might be available alternatives in the market which will uh uh influence the demand or there might be availability of alternative technology which will make the utilization of present resource more efficient with the given technology the utilization of coal or oil at present time might be quite inefficient that is why we are using too much of coal or oil to produce a given amount of output but it may so happen the technology would become so efficient that we don't require actually that much amount of coal energy to produce the same amount of output that is called technological advancement which will make the utilization of existing resource more efficient so either alternative goods or resource or technology these two are known as backstop in the literature of resource economics backstop now how this backstop actually uh, how this backstop actually determine uh, the price path of the existing resource that is something we need to understand how actually it will work okay 